Well, let's talk about what, more what the Prime Minister had to say uh, in a, uh, a, a sort of pooled interview. And he was asked to talk about a huge number of topics while out on a, a trip to a hospital yesterday. Uh, and when he said that, yes, biological males should not compete in women's sport. He also defended the government's move to, in their ban on gay conversion therapy, not to include a ban on, on trans conversion therapy because of the concerns that you won't even be allowed to have a conversation with someone who believes they may be trans, including children. You, um, uh, and uh, the dangers of that are happening. Well, let's talk to Fiona McEnena, who's uh, head of the sports campaigns at Fair Play for Women, who've been campaigning on a number of these issues for a number of years. Good morning to you, Fiona. Good morning, Julia. Um, this is a wonderful victory for common sense, but it is extraordinary that it's, look, it's front page news. It is literally on the front page of the, mail, of the Daily Mail today, a voice of common sense, the Prime Minister stating something which 99% of people would know was a given. Absolutely. Everybody knows it. You know, women's sport is for female people. Who would have thought we needed the Prime Minister to tell us that? And it's not a consolation prize for people who think they can't win in men's sport. And it doesn't matter how they feel. It doesn't matter how big or small they are. It doesn't matter what their testosterone levels are. Yep. They don't belong in women's sport. And we are looking forward to getting it back. Yeah, absolutely. And we look, we've seen this across the board. I mean, lots of people saying, oh, look, this isn't happening. Why are women getting themselves in a state about this? Again, you know, patronising uh, much. Uh, but, you know, we had that with Laurel Hubbard competing in the women's weightlifting in the Olympics. And that was really just the start. We've already had, you know, I remember Kent, Kent Women's Cricket Player of the Year, I think last year, was was a biological man. I mean, I'm, I guess, I'm, now I'm saying for Ofcom reasons, I'm saying biological man. A man who claimed he was a woman. But... A man. I mean, if you're born a man and you've still got all your tackle, you're, I mean, even if you haven't, you're still a man. And we can be respectful and we could be compassionate towards people and certainly non discriminatory towards people who, who, I mean, it must be incredibly hard to think that you were born in the wrong body and to have that gender dysphoria. I can't believe how how terrible and, and difficult and upsetting that must be for people. And I've got nothing but, but, but you know, but, but, but compassion. But that doesn't mean we then relinquish long established rights of women. Yes, absolutely. And I, I think we really don't know what anyone else is feeling. The bottom line is that women also have feelings. You know, we care about fair opportunities in sport. For some, it's a profession. For some, it's a relief from their own emotional trauma. Yep. You know, sport's important for everyone. So if people say it's important for trans people after all they've been through, we'd say, yeah, yeah, we understand why that is. We love it too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, there, there will be, you know, an inevitable outcry. Um, I mean, people actually talk about this being transphobic to say that women's sport is is only for women. I mean, I've even seen some people who I consider largely pretty sane on most things who say, yes, but you say biological males, but but someone who has undergone surgery or a, a man who's undergone surgery or or, or, or chemical treatment, but um, a testosterone levels taken down, um, they could also be included. Why, why would that not pass the grade for you? Yeah, because male puberty is a one-way street. You cannot undo male puberty. You know, it's like boiling an egg. You can take it out of the hot water, but you cannot unboil the egg. And whatever those male people do to their bodies, and however impaired they might be in their sporting performance, they've been through male puberty, and people like you and I have not, and that's why we have our own category and our own sports and our own events. It is very strange that in the trans debate, we... we... <laughs> And again, I don't think there is that much of a debate among the vast majority of people because I think most the vast majority of people want again not non-discriminatory policies towards trans people, except where discrimination is is relevant and necessary. And we do have discrimination um, where it's relevant and necessary. Where yes. we don't offer cervical smears to men and we don't offer prostate cancer treatment uh, to women because they you know because it's not relevant. And so it's when it's relevant. And this thing we've had all this debate about you know women's toilets, women in hospital wards, women's sport. Whether we talk about about women as you know was it chest feeders instead of breast feeders or, mm -hmm. or or cervix owners and all of this i mean just people who have people who are pregnant women being sort of wiped out of existence or, or, or redefined um yeah. in a really bizarre, why have we not seen that happen to men because you talk you think you you net there is no male cancer charity that no. talks about you know people who have prostates or people who have testicles it's only this only happens to women why is it only happening to women well, that's a great question. And you're right about the charities. I mean, we see the prostate cancer charity with campaigns saying men matter. And we agree with that. Of course they do. So you have to wonder why it's 
anti-trans to speak about ourselves, to speak about women and simply to speak about our own reality because we're not even talking about them when we're talking about women or talking about cervical smears or, or breastfeeding or whatever. So yeah, that's one of the reasons, Julia, why we campaign for women to be remembered and properly considered in, in policy that affects us. Um, do you think that Boris Johnson saying what he had to say um, about biological women and also uh, on trans conversion therapy, um, do you think that is sort of the start of the comeback of of a sensible debate on this? Because we've had people like Keir Starmer saying he, you know, a woman is a woman, but also a man who says he's okay. a woman. Um, we've had, you know, I mean, you know, is it Supreme Court judge nominees in America who apparently say because they're not a biologist, they can't define what a woman is. I mean, we've got madness going on there. But in terms of like the, the, the gay conversion therapy and the trans conversion mm. therapy, do you think we are finally getting to just a little bit of common sense? I do. It's a great relief. And the conversion therapy issue is a really, really critical one because it affects children who may be just unhappy about their sex body. You know, if I give you a couple of examples, imagine a little boy who's five or six and he plays with Barbie dolls and likes dressing up yeah. and the boys say to him, oh, you're a girl. And he comes home and says, I'm a girl. Imagine if he has to be affirmed as a girl just because it might be transphobic or it might be... Yeah gender identity conversion therapy. And parents have been told that, haven't they? They have actually been told, yes. if you do not affirm this, you, your, your child will be unhappy, your child... I mean, we talk, you know, a teenager will commit suicide. Parents Which have been the, terrified. Uh, fortunately, there, there, are, there are no data that suggests there's a suicide risk, no more than any other uh, mental health issue. Yeah. But just, just... So the other thing about children that young is they do not know that sex is permanent until yeah. they're about eight. <laughs> And then you raise the point about teenage girls. There are so many reasons why teenage girls might be unhappy at the prospect of growing up to be a woman. We know that the vast majority of teenage girls referred to gender identity clinics are attracted to other girls. Mm. And maybe they're afraid of being lesbian. Maybe they're you know, experiencing homophobia externally. But the idea that you have to tell that girl she's right, she really is a boy, yeah. and the pathway for her is medication and perhaps infertility. Yeah. How is yeah. that a good thing? So we don't want that yeah. to be yeah. the, a, an obligation on therapists. They have to be able to explore with these people Absolutely. what's going on with them. Absolutely. I mean, this, this is just common sense and, and sanity and, and kindness in that scenario as well. Uh, Fiona McEnena, you guys are at Fair Play for Sport. You are Fair Play for Women, sorry. You have been magnificent on this over the years and really appreciate you joining us this morning. Uh, Brendan Chilton, I mean, just a final quick word on that. Um, that the, 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 the conversion therapy thing, this big LGBT conference that's been cancelled because loads of people have pulled out because they say this is transphobic because uh, you can't, you know, there's no ban on trans uh, conversion therapy. I mean, they're quite wrong, aren't they? They are wrong, uh, Julia, and as a proper geezer, uh, I'm delighted to see this debate moving on uh, into a more sensible area. I think the overwhelming majority of people in this country uh, don't subscribe to this weird use of language that we've seen yeah. over the past few years. They think it's bizarre, and, you know, on this one, the Prime Minister is completely right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's get the latest sport right now with Toby Gillis. I think we're just doing men's sport today, <laughs> but who knows? There may be some women in there, but, yeah, we know why not.